Alright, hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be discussing this thing right here. What is this thing? So let's say you're just scrolling through Twitter, which is actually where I got this off of. You might see this funny looking thing over here and you might be wondering, what am I looking at? What does this mean? So in today's video, we're going to focus on this right here. And we're also going to focus on some of this right here. So, to start off, you there's different variations. Uh, you might see something similar to this, where it's only this bit here. Or sometimes you might see uh, like all of this here. Or you might see the whole thing. Sometimes it looks different. Sometimes there's different things. But as of right now, we're just looking at this section. So to start off, this here is something called a hodograph. What it is, is basically what they send, like right here, this is from the uh, Topeka office, NWS office. What they do is they send off balloons into the atmosphere. and Attached to these balloons are sensitive instruments that can uh, detect how fast they're going, where they're going, and which direction that they're going. So all of what this does is plot out where the balloon is going and how fast it's going. So you can see these numbers here, right? Like the 0.5, 1, 2, and 3. So what these are, these are height. So at this height, so let's start off. This is one kilometer in the air. So at one kilometer, we can see that this balloon started off here. And as it went up, it moved. And we can see a subtle shift in direction. What this shift in direction is, is any air parcel or any, any bit of air that goes from the surface up will change direction with height. This is important to thunderstorms as if there is no shear, which if there's, if it's straight like this, let's say also from zero to one, straight like that, or here, or if it's straight up like that, there's still shear here. So there's gonna be some shear, but there's gonna be no spinning with it. The spinning portion comes with the change of direction here so this has shear which is what thunderstorms need to be able to go on for long periods of time but usually those are ju that's just uh down to a hail threat so they only produce a uh, large hail and damaging winds and usually the tornado threat is either minimal or just non-existent so here, let me get rid of everything. And here we can see that this is elongated and it's also curved. So I'm, a, I'm gonna draw a reference. So this, as it's going up, so let's say this dot here is also one kilometer in the air. So that's just a reference. So we can see here that it also curves. It curves a little bit. So, Imagine this, you have a supercell on the ground and you have this photograph. The supercell is going to bring that curved shape to it. So just pretend this is the supercell, that's the RFD, and your tornado is right here. That's your little tornado. We can see that the storm takes a similar shape to it. It's not exactly this one, but here, let me redraw it. It'll look the supercell that would uh, pop up in this environment would look something like this. You can see the storm looks very similar to this photograph because it f basically it's exactly going to look like this. Now, of course, sometimes it's not always true, but we're just talking very basics right here. So all this is 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 showing where that uh, where that balloon is just going. Oh, I, I did not want to do that. Just 
three drive. And then you can also see that the distance between 0.5 here and, and one kilometer near is different. So here we can see that the from 0 to 0.5 kilometers in the air has a different magnitude or there's more space between each point that is a that is being sampled or being taken into account it has different lengths between them all what this is saying is as this rises this also moves away from the point that it was started from pretty fast so we can see here there was a decent amount of shear right here and if we take a look here at this number here, and I'll get, this is going to come in useful later. You can see that it's, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big number. And so with that being said, we usually, when I'm, when specifically when I'm looking at forecasting events, when I'm looking at models and I'm looking at soundings, I usually look up into here, up until the three kilometer, because that's nine times out of 10, that's where the photograph is going to mostly affect the storm. The storm is going to mostly take this shape here. So we can see it goes to the east. So we start off mo moving north, right? That's our, our, uh, our starting position is here. And we're moving, we're starting off going north. And then as we go up in the air, we start shifting more and more east until right around here, where all of a sudden, we're going back south. Why is that? Different, uh, different speeds and different directions in different parts of the atmosphere. So let's imagine this. So right here is also pretty good to look at. This also shows where the wind is going. So at the surface here, we can see that it's moving right around right here and this right here is this is at this height it's not a thousand meters it's a thousand millibars because the atmosphere can be uh, pretty chaotic and different altitudes and different temperatures all that junk can mess around with stuff so we usually stick to millibars so it looks like this this uh, specific um, balloon was sent at around uh, what is that? Oh, in between. That's around right here. So we can see this barb right here. This little guy. Winds are going straight north. They're coming in from the south and going straight north, which we can see right here on our photograph. And then, as we can see with height, all of a sudden the winds start becoming more and more out of the east until it's basically going due east. So if imagine, so at the surface, it's the winds are going this way, so at the surface here, but then we go up in the atmosphere, all of a sudden, the winds are going this way, which causes our photograph to look like this. And going back to this number here, SRH, which stands for Storm Relative Holicity, all that is, is just measuring the spin in the atmosphere like how much the atmosphere wants to spin. So as I said earlier, so looking back, so this is our main number here that we want to be paying attention to, is the area underneath this photograph is how we get this number. And you can, I don't know the exact equation to, uh, to, uh, to uh, get this number, but Usually computer programs do it for us. And as we can see here, if we find the underneath of this area here, we can find out that the wind accelerates and takes up this much space, 102. And all it does is take up that tiny little space there. It's pretty neat. And usually I like to take a look from here and usually you get, I like to go from zero to three kilometers because that gives you the general understanding of just how much spin there is. But I know a couple people like to do from zero to one kilometers. So right here, oh, that was bad. 
0 to 1. And I'll get this number here. 174 meters squared per second squared. That's not a big number. It's enough to get to have a tornado happen, but nothing serious. I've seen events that have happened with like 600, 700, 800, up to almost a thousand SRH happened before. And interesting, like uh. 2011 April 27th uh, you know super the super outbreak there is the environment was very interesting because Cape which is the, just the energy in the atmosphere was pretty low is only around 2,000 joules per kilogram but the shear here how much the atmosphere wanted to spin was off the charts so just because you're thinking Oh, the cape looks mad, you know, no matter what, you know, it's like, eh, it's not going to do much. But if the shear is going off the charts, there not be many storms, but the storms that do happen, they're going to be intense. And that's exactly what happened on uh, 2011. And you might be thinking, okay, so I only, I'm only looking at this part. Why am I only looking at this part and not this chunk here? Nine times out of ten it's pretty it's just kind of there to let you know but sometimes what we can happen is venting so in an updraft this is basically showing the updraft so let's say tornado is right here and you got some rain and or like air going feeding into the tornado and that air is rising and as it rises, it's bringing in moisture, and some of that moisture condenses and forms into rain. And some of that rain can follow this and end up in the path again, which can come down again as RFD. Now, on some photographs, so I'm going to modify this one. Sometimes you might see something like that a sharp turn to the north, and then it goes back over here. This bit here is something that we call venting or venting of the updraft which basically is is when that rain comes up it sometimes if it reaches this height it gets boom, it gets flung up away from in the path and usually when this happens you can get some extremely photographic tornadoes so no rain wraps soggy mess soggy messes of tornadoes and it makes it more visible but it's pretty rare to happen and 9 times out of 10 you're probably going to get a photograph that looks something like this. So now next time you come across Twitter or you're just scrolling for some place and you see a photograph you're thinking, ah, I know what that means now. I at least know, I at least know what this part means. And now on a different video. I will explain what this chunk means. What does this bit mean? So, uh, yep, that's all what I have to say. I definitely encourage, there are some great videos from the National Weather Service themselves and the Storm Protection Center. They have some amazing meteorologists and there are some great YouTubers that also explain it. This is just meant to be basic understanding of what's going on. 